Welcome to this module of the Budgets and Finance course, part of the State Library of Iowa's Director Endorsement Program. Today's module is all about budget processes. My name is Mary Ann Morey, and I'm the District Consultant for Central District with the State Library of Iowa. At the completion of this module, you should realize the various important calendar dates associated with the library's fiscal year and be able to recognize best practices for overseeing your library's budget. In our state, city fiscal years begin on July 1st and end on June 30th. Don't let this fact confuse you since it means you're operating in a fiscal year that may be numbered one year ahead of the calendar year. For example, Fiscal year 26 begins in July of 2025. Sometime in the fall of each year, the director and possibly a trustee or two will work to develop a budget proposal. Your city will let you know when this proposal is due or ask them if you're new to the job. Many times the city will prepare a worksheet for you and will tell you the percentages of change you should submit. Your budget proposal should be submitted first to your library board who will approve it. You'll then submit it to your city, likely to your city administrator or finance officer or city clerk. Sometime between December and February, your city council will conduct a budget work session. This is the time when all the council members gather with the city department heads and hash out the budget, which has been neatly packaged by the city clerk or finance officer. The city council will look at each department's request and grant or deny it. Attending this work session can be an opportunity for you to advocate for the library. After the budget work session, the City Council will then present the budget at public council meetings and eventually approve it. City budgets must be certified by March 31st. County supervisors are doing the same thing and many librarians go to the county meeting together in December or January to present a collective group effort presentation to the county supervisors. We'll talk about budget presentations in the next module. Throughout the year, the library director will prepare bills for payment and those bills will be approved by the library board and paid for by the city. The library director will provide city-generated monthly reports of the library's budget to the board, as well as report to the city any unexpected gifts given to the library. Your city clerk should provide a budget spreadsheet or report each month to you, the library director. You should be well aware of the accuracy of, the, of this report and be prepared to answer any questions the library may have regarding it. Toward the final quarter of the fiscal year, you may start to panic when you see more money going out than coming in. This situation will especially prove true if your library building suffers some damage, such as the HVAC goes kaput. You, meaning the director, with approval from the board, may need to file a budget amendment with your city. Check with your city about deadlines for any amendments. By May 31st, the city's budget amendments must be certified with the state. Budget amendments are required not only if you overspend your budgeted amount, but also if you get a windfall of unexpected income that wasn't originally part of your approved budget. On June 30th, your fiscal year is over and you must have used your allocated funds by that date. On July 1st, your new budget begins. A brief word about budget amendments as provided by our state law library. If you ever find your library in the position of having an extreme windfall, such as a major donation or grant award, or a major shortage because water damaged a large portion of your collection, you will need to notify the city, which may need to file a budget amendment. Keep in mind that the library may spend only the amount budgeted within one fiscal year. So even if the library received additional income from any source, which is always a good thing for budgets of any kind, those monies cannot be spent unless the certified budget is amended to include this additional income. No city department, including the library, should spend more than has been budgeted for its department unless the certified budget is formally amended by the city council. Amendments must be approved and published by city officials before May 31st of the current fiscal year, which is the statutory deadline for city budget amendments. 
Talk with your city clerk and or city administrator to determine the date when the library's anticipated amendment must be submitted for inclusion in the city's amendment hearing. Don't wait until the last minute. The city will provide you with a legal form for requesting an amendment. Let's look now at some best practices that will help you, the director, oversee the library's budget. You should definitely recognize this slide as one we've shared in other budgets and finance modules. It outlines the predominant budgetary duties of the library director. The remaining information in this module should help you learn some ideas that can help you accomplish these duties efficiently. As a review, some of the director's Budgetary duties include drafting the budget that the board will discuss and approve, managing the spending throughout the year, overseeing the daily ordering and purchasing of materials and other items necessary for the operations of the library, providing financial reports as obtained from the city clerk, and annual reports for budget discussion and approval. Understanding accountability of public funds, including financials and state required annual survey reports, and you may even be responsible for some grant writing. Obviously, this drafting of the budget is an annual task, but when exactly is it due and how should a director do this? As stated in a previous slide, Iowa's fiscal year runs July 1st through June 30th. However, discussions for the upcoming new fiscal year budgets of your city and your county, which are two primary sources of funding for your library, actually begin in the fall. Check with your city administrator or clerk before late August or early September to learn the budget process of your city. Check with other library directors in your county to learn the budget process for county requests. Since, as you hopefully recall from other modules in this course, your board has to approve your annual budget, you'll want your board involved in this process. Perhaps your board has a designated trustee for this task, or maybe your board has a finance committee comprised of a couple of trustees. If one of these resources doesn't exist, consider having your board appoint a two-member special committee to help you work on this task. Realize that your city may not grant you the funding you requested in your original budget proposal. If that's the case, you and the board will have to revise your budget, that is, change the amounts in the line items to equal the new total amount of the budget the city is going to allocate for the library. Your final budget or spending plan will need to be approved by the library board. Think of your budget as a spending plan. This slide shows a sample budget from an Iowa library. Note in the upper left corner that the library's budget falls under the city's general fund. The first page of the budget shows categories of various anticipated income, including state and county funds, monies from photocopies and assorted fees, and donations. Obviously, you'll have to guesstimate the donations line, but looking at past year's budgets of actual donated amounts can help you come up with a reasonable amount. While we're looking at this page of a budget, you'll see that this is actually part of a mid-fiscal year report. This kind of report should be provided monthly by your city clerk or finance officer. It shows the current budgeted amount, how much has been allocated or spent, as we'll see in the next slide, for the current time frame and year to date, and it also shows how much of your budget is remaining, as well as the percentage of the budget spent. More about those percentages in a moment. On this next page of this budget report, you can see expense categories. This is truly your spending plan. It tells where you are going to spend the monies you've been allocated. Depending on the size of your library, you may have more or fewer line items of expenses than noted here but you should have a sufficient number of them that you can easily see where the monies are being spent. Your line item categories may not be identical to the ones in this example, so don't fret if yours have different category names. The important thing is that you can divvy out your budgeted funds into the various categories of expenditures. One of the first things to consider in this budget creation process, and this will be the job of the director, is to determine revenue and expenses. Revenue means income, what you expect to earn, as it were, the monies you think you'll be given, uh, that will be given to your library. Those monies will likely include the monies from your city and county, 
your Enrich Iowa State funds, and you'll recall that those funds include direct state aid, open access, and interlibrary loan reimbursements. Monies collected from any fines or fees that the library may charge, any special account monies, and anticipated gifts or donations. Obviously, as I said earlier, you'll be guesstimating some of these categories, such as gifts, but you should be able to look at previous year's numbers and make an approximate estimate for the new year. Expenditures means expenses. What will your library need to pay for in the coming year? You'll want to remember to include your staff's salaries, as well as the assorted taxes and insurance for those employees. You'll also have insurance to pay on your library building and its contents. Maintenance will include maintenance of the building, such as janitorial services, window washing, inspection of the sprinkler system and fire alarms, carpet cleaning, HVAC checkups, parking lot restriping, lawn mowing, etc. And you'll have other categories of maintenance, such as your copier and printer, IT maintenance for your computers and server, and service contracts for some of your software, such as your automation system, your security system, your computer and print management system, etc. You'll have fees for telecommunications, phone and internet, fees for materials, books, movies, cake pans, and whatever else is in your library's collection, and fees for supplies, tape, book jackets, paper, pens, cleaning supplies, etc. You'll want to allocate funds for training and travel. Programming may require money for craft supplies, other supplies, guest speakers, etc. And of course, you'll need to pay for electricity and water. Additionally, you'll want to consider technology costs, including not only hardware, but also some software, such as word processing programs you may need to relicense for your patron and staff computers. Your library may have additional categories, but these are some of the major ones, which most every library budget will include. And yes, I know that the expenditures list is much longer than the revenue list. However, your totals for revenue and your totals for expenditures must equal each other. You've got to have a balanced budget. Think of your budget like this. You have income and you have expenses. The two should equal. You don't want more expenses than you have income. And the two sections together comprise your entire budget proposal. Within each of these two main categories of income and expenses, you'll have various line items. Your expenses category will undoubtedly have more line items than your income category. I only had so many boxes to work with on this chart, but you can see that there are several things noted in each of the expense boxes. Each of those things would be a separate line item in your budget. As I said in the previous slide, the number of line items you have will depend upon your library and its needs. As you think of new ideas for the library, always think about how those services and programs will fit into your overall budget. Will you need a new category of expenditure? Will you need to seek additional funding? How can you best explain these new ideas and needs in a way that will help ensure you have proper and sustainable funding? Remember that your library board has the authority to oversee your library's budget. This oversight includes determining line item amounts of expenditures. Your city may tell you to reduce your budget and give you less money for your total budget but it's up to your board to determine where they will make the necessary budget cuts. So how do you develop a budget? This is a huge question for many first-time directors. Here are basic steps. First, look at at least the past two to three years worth of budget reports. You might even want to compare the past five years to get a really good feel for the library's funding and spending habits. Next, watch for trends in those budget reports. For example, magazine subscriptions increased each year, but postage costs decreased each year. Utilities went up, but donations also increased. Use those trends to adjust your line items in your new proposed budget. Third, think about the new things you hope to add to the library for the coming year. Examples might be technology upgrades or outreach services, or maybe a new part-time staff member. All of these things will cost money. Determine the amount and figure it into the proposed budget, making cuts elsewhere as needed or 
making good points for your budget needs and increases. Fourth, make sure you are well acquainted with your budget request, how you derived at the numbers and why you need increases or changes. Fifth, always be prepared to explain your library's needs and desires for new services. And lastly, be familiar with how you derived all of those numbers and why you need additional funds or changes to the budget. You should be able to explain how services will change for the better with the increased funding, but also be prepared to explain how services may change for the worse if budget decreases are implemented. As stated elsewhere in this budget and finance course, directors need to oversee the pacing of spending the library's budget throughout the year. The director is responsible for divvying out the monthly allocations and making the monthly purchases for books and other material orders, programming costs, staffing expenses, etc. If you divide your total budget into 12 months, you'll see that it equals 8.3333%. So if you set a target of spending 8.33% of the budget each month, you'll be able to stay on track all year barring any emergencies. This slide gives you a general look at where your total budgetary spending should be at the end of each month of the fiscal year, which runs July 1st through June 30th. Realize that some large annual expenditures, such as insurance premiums or contract fees, may cause a perceived disruption, but take them into account with the overall budgetary picture. If you are receiving monthly budget reports from your city clerk, such as the sample we showed a few slides back, you'll be able to see the percentage of your budget spent as well as remaining for the fiscal year. Another of the director's duties is to oversee ordering and purchasing. You'll need to keep your orders in order. Here are some best practices for doing this. Use a professional book vendor, which will provide you with invoices, notices if you've already ordered the item, standing orders, discounts, etc. Keep a file of items ordered, the date, the titles, the vendor name, etc. A simple note card file box or an online spreadsheet can suffice for this kind of file. Indicate on a calendar when various renewals for services are due. Maintain a bills list. You'll see a sample in an upcoming slide. And make a type of grocery list that is a place to write the library's needs, such as when tape is running low or when you've grabbed the last package of copy paper so you can order before you actually run out. Another budgetary duty of the director is to provide budget reports to the library board. You can see on this chart that it's actually the city clerk who should be issuing a monthly budget report to you. You need to ensure that this gets done in a timely fashion so you can then forward the report to your board in advance of your monthly board meetings. Trustees should have a couple of days to review the report before each month's meeting, so any discussion regarding it can occur at the re regular board meeting. One of the other budgetary reports you'll want to provide your board each month is a bills list. This type of bills list can also help you keep track of orders and submissions of payments. While some librarians present copies of every single bill received over the past month, I recommend you also consolidate the monthly bills into a report that can easily be viewed and retained as record of what was approved when. This kind of document can not only be included in your permanent records along with your board agenda and minutes for that month's meeting, but it can also help you recall when you ordered something and or when you submitted an invoice to the city for payment. You see that the budgetary line items are noted in the first column. The bill's invoice number is noted for reference in the second column, along with a vendor name and brief description of the purpose of the bill. The final column lists the amount, the subtotals for each budgetary category, and the total of the bills for that month. There is a place for board approval with the board president and secretary signing off. While you don't have to maintain a form such as this, nor are you required to provide such a report, this is a functional and practical way for you as the director to get a good grasp on the library's bills, and it's a good way for your board to easily review all of the bills for that month. Some cities will require a trustee to sign off on each and every invoice, while other cities will allow you, the director, to do that after the board has approved the bills. 
Talk with your board and your city clerk about what system will work best for your library. Directors also provide reports to the state library. Reports that include budgetary aspects are your Enrich Iowa report, which specifically addresses how you spent your direct state aid and a report of your open access transactions. You'll want your city clerk to keep track of your direct state aid funds, and you will need to let the clerk know what bills you want paid with those funds. Remember that your direct state aid funds should not replace your normal budget, but should be used to provide additional services in order to improve services and reduce inequities among communities. For this reason, it makes sense to note your direct state aid funds as a separate line item in your library's budget. Talk with your district consultant if you have questions about the Enrich Iowa program. Another state report that includes budgetary information and which directors need to prepare and provide each year is the annual survey. This report has a section all about the library's financial aspects, how much was received by the city, the county, from other sources, etc. The annual survey is always due at the end of October. Your district consultant can assist you with this report, but ultimately you will need to obtain the details about your library's financials, and this is best done by keeping abreast of such matters throughout the year. Here are a few budgetary best practices for the board. As mentioned here and in other modules, the library board has oversight of the library's budget. While your trustees don't have a hand in the day-to-day -day expenditures, they do have the role of approving the library's budget and its monthly expenses. Trustees should review the monthly board packet in advance of the meeting. This means the director will need to provide a board packet to trustees at least two days prior to the scheduled meeting. The packet should include, among other things, a copy of the monthly budget report as, re as provided by the city a copy of a bills list similar to the one I shared on a previous slide, possibly copies of every invoice that you want the board to approve for that month. Trustees should also be engaged at the meetings. They should participate in the annual budget preparation. The board also has the authority to shift funds from one line item to another. This is an authority that other city boards do not have. Any such line item changes should be duly noted through a vote at a library board meeting. You'll also want to convey any such changes to your city clerk. Trustees also have the role of advocating regularly for proper library funding. In all of these best practices, it will behoove you to have a good working relationship with your city, particularly with your city clerk. Remember that the library is a city department and you and the city are all part of the same team. There are resources available to assist you with budget questions and concerns. Here are some common contacts. The Iowa League of Cities, the State Auditor's Office, which would much rather see you ask questions and do things correctly rather than wait until an audit. And as always, your state library is available to help. Your district consultant and the state law library can assist you with most any of your library-related questions. This concludes our module about budgets and budget processes.